Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kurt. Welcome back. Hello, Farlanders, too. Hello, Farlanders. Good gravy. That's very difficult to keep up with. But welcome back to Farlands or Bust. Woof, this is episode 780 of the series. As we exit the hidey hole, not the last episode's hidey hole. If you're just joining us, perhaps coming from episode 779 directly to episode 780, as one would chronologically assume things would work, you may notice this is not the last episode's hidey hole. That is because there is a episode 779.5 in which I streamed two hours of the Far Lands or Bust World to my Twitch stream, like I said I would start doing. Um, but fear not, <laughs> there's no sort of plot or, or narrative or uh, uh, um, congruity that you need to follow here in Far Lands or Bust, other than that we are continuing west to these Far Lands, to those Far Lands, to some Far Lands here in Minecraft Beta. 1.7.3 and this episode is coming out on Sunday, April 26th, 2020. Still being recorded live the day before. Ah! Careful, Wolfie. Uh, you may also be interested to know that during that live stream last week, we passed 30,000 megabytes in the world save file. Just before we started this, we are at... 30,101 megabytes. So we surpassed the mathematical 30 gig size on the world save file of simply walking straight west in Farlands for over nine years. And now on episode 780. And we've also raised money for charity for the Progressive Animal Welfare Society. Pause here in the Seattle area. We've raised $1,752 at farlandsorbust.com is where you can learn more about the series, the charity, and donate as well. And uh, all those donations go to the charity and you can leave a message with your donation in order to ask a question that I'll add and answer in the next episode. I've decided at least at this juncture to uh, keep the donation questions for the actual episodes, the the streams, which I also plan to do again after this recording, uh, the streams are going to be more about the live chat interaction, uh, if that makes any sense. Just I don't want people to donate, ask a question, and then miss their question because I'm answering it during some two-hour live stream or something like that. So that makes sense, I feel. If anything, nothing makes sense anymore but that. That is the one thing that makes sense. You know what else makes sense? My YouTube channel is gaining subscribers. <laughs> for the first time, for the first time in over nine years, I just noticed that I passed 400,000 subscribers. Never ever have I had 400,000 subscribers. Peaked at about 390 thousand subscribers back in the ye old days of like 2015 pre YouTube crumbling <laughs> era of YouTube um so yeah that's fun and interesting hello everybody thank you for subscribing clearly you're here for far lands or bust because I'm not uploading anything else <laughs> because I'm not uploading anything else so 400,000 subscribers I still have my silver play button for achieving 100,000 subscribers back in 2012. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. That is pretty funny. Um, but hi, hello, how are you? Yes, this is episode 780, Walking to the Far Lands. Uh, you may have also noticed that I uploaded for the first time since 2015 a Far Lands or Bust flashback. Little little clips before before Twitch clips were a thing. Little clips from Far Lands or Bust episodes of of yore. I chose the one where I almost fell in 
to a pool of lava. Um, so that went up, and uh, I, I did that because I was capitalizing on popularity, viral, a viral tweet. <laughs> uh, somebody had twoten at Gavin, free of the slow-mo guys and Rooster Teeth, that uh, they recently re or they recently were listening to an old podcast, uh, uh, the Achievement Hunter podcast, I think it was what it was, and uh, he had mentioned Farlands or Bust, so they looked it up and he, they were like, he's still going for it, Gavin, and then Gavin replied to them. Uh, so I was getting a lot of follows and, and tweets and notifications on the tweeter from that, so I'm like, how can I capitalize on such things as these? So I decided to make that Farlands of Bus flashback, finally. <laughs> and uh, a long time ago, I, I had Gavin record an intro for the Farlands of Bus flashbacks, which he did, and I am using profusely. <laughs> I am using profusely, and that caused quite a few people, probably among these new subscribers and viewers, now that we've reached 400,000, uh, who are like, how, how did you get Gavin to, to do the intro? It's because we know each other. Like, through this, he found Far Lands or Busts way back in March uh, or April 2011 when I started. Um, he put, I think it still is, I think my channel is still on the, his, his recommended channels, if that is even still a feature on YouTube, honestly, I don't know, uh, on, on the Slow Mo Guys channel. Um, but he got in contact with me. Uh, he sent quite a few of my original Farlanders back in the day my way, and uh, he's actually the one who told me about and recommended me to the, at the time, YouTube Partner Program, uh, which I finally joined in July of that year, 2011, I believe. He's like, hey, your, your stuff's good. Yeah. <laughs> You're you're so humble, uh, <laughs> and he said you should you could you could put ads on this stuff and make make money. I'm like really, I had no idea, so I did that. So that's that, and we've met multiple times at PAX events and uh, that charity event uh, a couple years ago around TwitchCon and stuff. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't know that we're like best friends or whatever, but uh, acquainted. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I almost said accomplices, but that means we committed some sort of crime. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Colleagues! Let's call it that. Professionalism. So yeah, that's, that's where that came from. I don't know whether or not I actually capitalized on that, but I figured a good time as any. And then people were disappointed that I didn't put slow-mo in. Um, I didn't put slow-mo in, uh, but that's because... In 2015, I was editing and creating Far Lands of Bus flashbacks using Sony Vegas 11, um, and uh, I'm now using Adobe Premiere, so I, I I haven't made one since then, so I had to literally recreate the Far Lands of Bus flashback, the whole editing, the title sequence, the intro. I had to create that from scratch, and that took long enough. I wasn't going to sit there and try to figure out how to how to put a clip in slow motion in addition to having to recreate all the scenes and stuff that I created in Sony Vegas from- Whoa! There he is! There he is! There's that guy! Y'all see him! Oh Jesus! Oh Jesus! That was close! That was very close! Speaking of almost dying, what a rude dude! What a rude dude! Look forward to that in a future Far Lands or Bust flashback. Ooh, if that wasn't two blocks of water down there, that could have been disastrous. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. See what happens when you tune in to Far Lands Bust? You miss... you, 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 you see the... Some, some fantastical moments. The spooky noises. Whoa, jeez. Now I'm all kerfluffled. And, and bedazzled. Ah! Oh, those are chickens. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on edge, man. You gotta calm down. Woo! Woo! <laughs> mm, monkeys! Oh, Wolfie took a little bit of damage from that fall, I believe. So let's get him back up to health. Let's I need to I need to have a lie down. 
I do. I need to have a lie down. There we go. Oh, buddy, we survived and we shall continue on in the morning. Oh, uh, oh, you like stuff? <laughs> and awakeness. I saw those, I, it was a trap, I think. I saw those arrows and I'm like, ooh, free arrows. But it was, it was a trap placed there by that very Skeletna. Yet we escaped. We escaped with uh, some flair, it seems like. Being shot off the edge of a cliff. It was like, uh, it was like, uh, that one movie with uh, Harrison Ford where he jumps off the dam. Dam! And uh, it wasn't me. It was the one-armed man. That one. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, <laughs> continuing on, continuing on. The Fugitive. That's what I said. Um, <laughs> so yeah, carrying on here. I had a, speaking of television, <laughs> or, or, or references, uh, we've been working our way, my girlfriend and I, through uh, Star Trek, The Next Generation. Uh, we're on season five, and we we do so downstairs, and, and Juno's downstairs, and uh, well, she sits on the couch with us. Um, and a really weird thing happened. It was the episode where the entire crew loses their memory of who they are. And they, like, don't know who they are or why they're on this ship or who's in charge of what. And there's a sp specific, specific scene where Riker and Troy are in his room. And he's, like, trying to piece together who he is. And he has a trombone. He picks up the trombone and and starts playing it to be like, I know how to play the trombone. I don't know why. That, for some reason, got Juno's attention like nothing ever before. And she became absolutely enthralled during that scene. And the thing you might be saying is, oh, the sound of the trombone. No, no. She perked up and reacted when he picked up the trombone. When she saw the trombone, he picked up. She, her, her ears went in full radar dish mode, and then she was, like, enamored. <laughs> uh, and then he started playing, and then they continued to have a conversation, and she was still enamored. She was doing the whole head tilty sideways thing, I, and we, I, we could not figure out what she was responding to. Unless, perhaps, in her previous life, her owners had brass instruments. Um... But it was weird also because it, w it wasn't the sound that caught her attention. It was just the sight of him picking it up. And then she continued to like listen to their conversation, even though the trombone was out of the picture by that point. It was very bizarre. It was very unusual. And then after we finished watching the episode, we went back and watched that scene again. And it didn't quite have the same effect on her. Um, but like she did perk up every now and again, but not quite as dramatically and noticeably. Like she was doing the whole head tilty thing uh, that dogs do when they're trying to understand what they're seeing or looking at. And it was just very unusual. Maybe there was something in the background noise. It wasn't anything unusual. Did I get this free iron? I mean, I guess. I might need a new helmet soon now that I just got shot in the face. Um, it, it, like, it wasn't anything unusual to the... 300 some odd Star Trek episodes we'd watched in the past. Like, she's seen Riker and Deanna Troy in the same conversation before. It wasn't. Oh, dang it. It was just really weird. It was just really weird. And I don't know what to make of it other than it triggered some, some sort of interest or memory or something. We even then went on YouTube and tried to start like watching 
trombone videos. <laughs> uh, and maybe it's a trumpet. We tried a trumpet. <laughs> and then, like, really nothing really grabbed her attention. I mean, every once in a while, if they hit, like, a high note or something, she would, you know, like any dog, she would, she got interested. That was... That was just a weird thing. I, I, I'm not sure if any of you have pets who you've like encountered just like a similar strange like what 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 did that trigger? <laughs> what what did that cause in this pet? That some distant memory or or, 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 or familiarity or something. It was very very unusual. Yeah, and it's not so much about like, yeah, if I if I play dogs howling, she'll start howling. If I play cats meowing, she starts to look around for the cat. Like, that's to be expected, but this was just like completely random and like made no sense. Riker picking up a trombone and before he even played it, she reacted to the trombone. He played the trombone and then they continued having a conversation for like another two minutes during that scene and she was very just glued to it. She does watch TV, like, I do notice that she does, like, look at the TV, whether or not it's anything that interests her. She does watch what's happening on the TV a lot of times, but this was just very unusual. Very unusual indeed. I thought I'd mention that. <laughs> oh, buddy. Oh yeah, uh, that was fun. <laughs> that was different. That was interesting. You know what else is fun and different and interesting? Um, car and a steak. No, uh, house renovation. Unexpected house renovation. Here's the thing. <laughs> I had to dismantle my entire office this past Thursday and Friday. And not stream, not do this Farlands thing or anything like that. Uh, the girlfriend, I moved in with the girlfriend, she owns this house, uh, prior to everything, gestures, uh, she had set up new windows to be installed, because this is a very old house, uh, it had a, a, a menagerie of the original wood frame windows, uh, as well as some cheaply replaced aluminum single pane windows throughout the house. Very drafty, very cold, as I've mentioned many times. But she finally decided to get the windows replaced. Then gestures at everything. This all happened and it all got delayed, obviously. Um, but then, uh, early last week, we figured out, oh, they can do it next Thursday. Is next Thursday okay? You'll have to take apart your office and stuff. This was like Tuesday. Next Thursday. Okay, sure. Two days later, what I would have called this Thursday, <laughs> they show up at the door. I'm very thankful that I couldn't sleep and I woke up early because they showed up at like 8 a.m. Uh, otherwise, I'm usually sleeping still at that point. Um, and I'm like, uh, next Thursday was when we agreed. And even, like, this wasn't a miscommunication between me and the girlfriend. This was a miscommunication between her and the schedule person. Um, so they left <laughs> and then got in contact with her and then had to be like, well, it was a miscommunication, but everything's ready and they're there now. And you be ready in an hour. And be ready means move all the furniture away from all the windows at a minimum of three feet. Take down all the blinds and curtains. Uh, take apart your office. Hide the cats in the bathroom. Create June, you know, basically like, well, this is happening now. This thing that you had planned for next week is happening now. So yeah, that's where my uh, last two days went. <laughs> oh man, I mean, sure, it was out of the blue and a little bit frustrating, but now I guess it's over, mostly. They thought it was gonna take two days, but they're gonna be back Monday, but they finished the ones in my office, so my office is back together. 
They need to do one more in the bathroom and uh, in the basement. They're replacing and building up a little bit some, some walls uh, because they're really weird windows. Like I said, a menagerie of 1920s wooden windows with those big metal iron weights in the walls. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, so the very cheap, thin oh. aluminum single pane glass from the 70s when the house was moved and built up. Um, so those are all gone. So at least now we have windows so that next winter it is hopefully not super duper drafty and frosty. But also none of the windows had screens. So over the summer we couldn't open up any of them because cats could escape. So now all the windows have screens. So during these moist, hot summer times, we can open the windows. Because air conditioning is not a thing in Seattle. Um, so that's good. So that was unexpected and 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 unscheduled, but hopefully no more of that for a while. Uh, so yeah, that was fun. And so I had to play the game of keep an eye on the contractors doing work, but also avoid them. <laughs> that the socially anxious person such as myself has to do. Uh, except they're everywhere. <laughs> there were multiple teams working on multiple rooms, outside, inside, downstairs, upstairs. So it was very hard to both avoid and keep track of them. Fun times! Let's go to sleep and continue in the morning. <laughs> And a window pane -ness. Window pane? Max window pane. Uh, the replacement of Max window pane. <laughs> well, that's just very interesting. Very interesting indeed. That's it's just one of the reasons why I'm not personally myself down to own a house anymore. Thinking about renovations, replacing windows. Eventually, bathrooms here are going to be replaced, as well as the kitchen. That's like years off, but that's still like... <sighs> that's troubling. That is very troubling indeed. Um, but yeah, over, done with, sort of, mostly. Yeah, next Monday or next Monday? <laughs> no, no, that would be this Monday. This Monday. This Monday. Speaking future tense, this Monday. So from now on, we will be making all of our schedules using the actual number, date, and day, and time. None of this next to this. Wednesday after next. N none of that craziness. A half past two, a quarter three. M who knows what all this random jibba jabba means. So. That's been my week. How's your week been? Felipe had a good week because you donated to Pause at farlangerbus.com and asked the question, why do you not post other content on YouTube beside Farlands or Bust anymore for the last three months? Felipe is counting. He's got a, got, a, got a thing ready. Ooh. Oh, um, hmm. Ah, good thing I didn't jump off there. Good thing I didn't get shot off by a skeleton there. Um, well, if 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 we can go back to the fact that I just passed for the first time 400,000 subscribers on YouTube since I've not been uploading anything other than Farlands or Bust, that's 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 a reason. That's a very good reason. Um, yeah, basically YouTube. I'm not focusing on just that's the long and the short of it but YouTube itself does not reward varied content it does not it does not promote varied content a YouTube channel has to be one thing the slow-mo guys is all slow-mo guys videos our lands are bust AKA the Kurt J. Mac channel is all Far Lands or Bust episodes now. It's, uh. 
it's unfortunate. Uh, oh. it, I mean that that's a good that's a good way to put it, I suppose. Um, but it's also yes because I've been focusing on Twitch. Last year I was uploading a lot of my Twitch vods, but every time I did that, my Farlands or Busts content oh. would get demerited, I suppose, and then we would see a loss in views across the board, and it just wasn't worth it. Also, it not being worth it, being paid, because this is my job, being paid through YouTube content is just not a thing that happens anymore. It's not the time to put into creating unique content for YouTube is not... There's no, there's no, it's just, just, it's a loss. It's, it's not, uh, it's not viable for a variety gaming channel if you don't already have 20 million subscribers or whatever. Um, it just isn't a way for growth or a way to make money. I don't make money on YouTube. I mean, I make some money on YouTube, but sometimes I make more selling t-shirts per month. So, um, I, I'm still uploading Farlines or Bust there because that's where all the Farlines or Bust content exists. And right now it is the best place to host an archive of video, of high definition video to share for free. Um, and, uh, and, and, and yeah, there's no alternatives for that right now. So I'm just keeping with that. And, uh, like I'm still, I'm still, uh, Perhaps this isn't even worth my time, but I'm still cutting out VODs and things on my Twitch channel of each of the games I play, just to keep tr keep track of how many games I'm playing and what games I'm playing. Um, so those VODs, I think, are a substitute for all the various YouTube content I used to put up. But obviously I know some people have VOD problems with Twitch and whatever, but it's just not worth it for me to then bring that to YouTube and impact my channel and the far lines of bust content for that so yeah that was a confusing but hopefully succinct enough explanation as to why it's only far lines of bust stuff uh, i'm even curious to see how this two hour streaming far lines of bust content goes up on youtube and how it gets received the first one decently received uh and, and well viewed certainly not as much as an actual episode of Far Lands or Bust, and definitely not as much as the flashbacks of Far Lands or Bust. Um, but yeah, that's that's just a, a way of, the way things are, and you'll you'll probably be seeing a lot of other YouTubers, specifically gaming YouTubers that you might be used to doing the same thing, or just abandoning it altogether for Twitch. Um, but yeah, thank you for donating and for the question. Um, oh buddy, uh, Cal- well, Calvin has a lot of questions. So, we might have to wait for the next episode to get to Calvin's questions. But I can get to Frederick's question. Have you been keeping up with the Grand Tour series? How do you think it compares to the Top Gear series? And what episode was the most enjoyable? Well, there hasn't been any new ones in a while, so I'm a little bit... I don't remember much. <laughs> um, I, I, I watched all of them. Not quite the same, and they're not going to be the same anymore, either. Um, the last Grand Tour one was the boat one, which I didn't enjoy too much. They're basically switching from the segmented talk show uh, format to simply what I thought they should have done is just doing the the specials, the let's drive across Africa specials, or you know those those challenge specials, uh, which I think is the best content they have. I I didn't quite care for the first season of the Grand Tour because they were still figuring things out, and even continuing, I I always skipped the celebrity segments, whether or not they were fake or real. It was just like filler to me. Um, and yeah, it, there was definitely, they didn't have as much budget, but it was still beating a dead horse, I feel like. Um, so yeah, um, 
I don't know. Not my favorite thing in the world, honestly. Um, it's just that that sort of thing that changes that you have to adapt to. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it because it's been so long. It's been so long since I what uh, you know what I did I did watch the uh, uh, James May in Japan. That was a pretty good show. That was a pretty good show, I think. Not there wasn't too much of it that was new to me, um, but I guess if you want some of that Top Gear slash Grand Tour sort of special vibe, without you know, with one third of the cast, then James May in Japan is actually a good show. Um, I think it's only like six or eight episodes or something like that, but that's on that's on Amazon. Um, so I, f I felt like that was uh, that was pretty good, and I guess, uh, like I said, it reminded me a bit of those travel series. It would be nice. I would like to start seeing these travel and or like food travel series, where the host isn't a middle-aged white guy. <laughs> Perhaps we could work on a few different perspectives. I'm just thinking. Uh, there were, there's like a lot of other ones. I mean, obviously, we all miss the uh, Anthony Bourdain series. That was really good. Uh, uh, um, but yeah, there's like there's there's the one there's the everybody loves Raymond guy. He's weird. <laughs> He's weird. He's got one on Netflix. Uh, my dad likes that one, and he introduced me to it. But I'm like, I can't keep watching this guy. He's weird, confusing. Um, uh, there was, uh, oh, what's his name? The chef who had a series and then he started doing a little bit of a travel series with celebrities. Some of those were okay. A lot of them were not. Not Ray Romano, the producer, the producer of the show, um, Phil, I'll have what Phil's having, or whatever it's called. I forgot the name of the show. Uh, you look it up on Netflix. I think it's called I'll Have What Phil's Having. Or Somebody Feed Phil. Everybody everybody feed Phil. Somebody, everybody feeds Phil. Something like that. It's a, it's a play on words. Um, but yeah, he was like a writer and like best friend of Ray Romano who wrote for Everybody Loves Raymond. And for some reason he has a travel food show. Um, he's a weird, weird dude. Bill Rosenthal, yes, that, that person. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, that's, that's where that is. But that's, no, no problem now, we're watching Star Trek. <laughs> we are watching Star Trek. And so is Juno, <laughs> apparently, as we recently learned. Um, yeah. So this has been episode 780 of Far Lines of Busts. Let me make the full size hidey hole here, even though we'll be leaving it momentarily as I continue streaming Far Lines of Busts here in a moment on Twitch. Oh, I gotta cook. I gotta, I gotta schmelt. This, this free iron, whoops, we found. Oop. Oh, shift clicking doesn't work here. There we go. Um, what else do I need? I need beds. Farlinesabusts.com, where you can oh. learn more about the series. For charity, donate, ask questions. Sorry, Kelvin, I didn't get to your question this week. I will next episode. Questions, I should say. <laughs> and, uh... Come on. There we go. And yeah, we'll have some, some smelted iron at the beginning of the next one. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. My name is Kurt. I will see you next time. <laughs>
Whoa, geez, now I'm all kerfluffled and, and bedazzled. Ah, oh, those are chickens. 